So we move to chapter three, managing inventory. Now, a number of formulas in this particular uh, chapter that are going to be very, very important to us. Now, note, some are included in the tables provided within the exam and some are not. Let's be careful. Some of these formulas we've got to rote learn. So let's take a look at this first area, inventory costs and indeed control. Let's take a look at costs first. Now, um, companies need to manage the costs of inventory. Um, um, why and, and what costs? Well, when we think about inventory, remember, we're thinking about anything from raw materials, um, work in progress, finished goods, partly finished goods. There's a range of different types of inventory and indeed, as we see here on screen, a range of different costs associated with different types of inventory. You know, the original or indeed historic purchase cost. Where do we go to? Who's the best supplier? What's the best cost? Are we interested in quality? What about the ordering cost? So literally, okay, we're running out. What does it actually cost us to order? You know, is there an admin charge? Is there a, uh, some form of distribution charge? Is there petrol, etc., etc., etc.? A stock out cost, again, important. You know, if we're in a position where we're, let's say, a man manufacturer producing goods, if we don't have raw materials or inventory or stock to produce our products, we're potentially losing revenue, we're losing sales, we're potentially losing reputation. There's a reputational risk there. Outside of that, a holding cost. Now, a holding cost simply means what is the cost of us storing and holding, housing our inventory? You know, uh, we have a warehouse, we have 10 warehouses, we have security staff, we have electricity, etc., etc., etc. So, all of these costs combine into the conundrum, if you will, or the question of, well, how do we minimize it? Next area for us is just to think of um, over and above the cost that we've discussed. Um, what about obsolescence? And what do we mean by obsolescence? Now, obviously, this depends on the nature of the industry, the nature of the company. What are, uh, what is the inventory? You know, uh, does it become obsolete? Does its value reduce, let's say, over time, uh, making it in effect uh, irrelevant? to the organization's needs. That's a consideration. Next area, deterioration. You know, what if it's um, fresh produce? You know, if it degrades in some way, then we won't be able to use it. Again, a key consideration. Outside of that, buffer. What do we mean by buffer inventory? Let's define it. Well, we're talking about the minimum amount of inventory that we should have to deal with any rise, unexpected or otherwise, in demand. We need to have some sort of inventory so we can avoid stockouts, so we can avoid the situation whereby we can't meet demand, let's say, if it rises unexpectedly tomorrow, next week, etc. So buffer levels are important. Outside of that, this is more of a technique and a, a key buzzword. You'll see this area of just in time in your studies going forward. Let's get a fix on it now. What do we mean? Well, this sort of stems from the 1980s and indeed Japanese manufacturing. It really is the idea, as you'll see with the definition here, that perhaps we should put ourselves in a position where we only order just in time when production is actually ready to use the material. So rather than having a massive warehouse with a range of different types of inventory ready for whenever we need it down the line, let's just order it in from suppliers at the point just before we're ready to use it. Now let's think about it. If we were to use a just-in-time system, clearly the level of inventory is lower. So therefore, holding costs you know, our warehouse costs, uh, supervision costs, insurance, electricity, etc., must be lower. But obviously, 
there's a flip side to that. You know, we need reliable suppliers. You know, if you're going to order on a just-in-time basis, you better make sure that the people you're ordering from can deliver the right amount, the right quality, etc., in line with your production requirements. Now, bottom line is, with this sort of approach to inventory management, um, we only make as many units as has been sold. You know, we basically get an order in, we order our inventory, um, we uh, make uh, the unit, we sell it. So broadly speaking, we're talking about no inventory here. Now, in addition to that, clearly, if we're ordering as we need, then clearly smaller or more frequent deliveries from suppliers are going to be required. And as we see here, dedicated suppliers are needed because, you know, if we don't have good links, good communications, and indeed reliable, dedicated suppliers, just in time is a waste of time. It's not going to work. Okay. Moving on from there, when we think about managing the costs, we talked up top about the type of costs. I mean, as you would expect, you know, most observers would say, well, okay, many different costs, stock out, uh, and purchase, holding, ordering, etc. Bottom line is that this is a balancing act. It's about balancing out, and it's about finding a way to really minimize all of those costs. Some will affect the other. Um, and we think firstly about um, order size. Okay, well, let's order a lot. Let's order a little. Bottom line is that you know if we order bulk in bulk, we're going to have lower prices because it's highly likely we're going to get discounts. Okay, but if we're ordering in bulk, we need to store in bulk, which must mean higher holding costs. We need a larger warehouse. We need more uh, supervisory staff. Uh, we need a higher level of insurance, etc., etc. So again, you can see the balance. Now, let's refer to stock out costs, which we uh, talked about up top. You know, basically loss of sales. We don't need loss of sales just because we can't manage our inventory uh, uh, correctly. And indeed, linked into that may be as important in the medium to long term. If we lose sales, we lose reputation, okay? Which means more sales is a vicious circle, a loop, as it were. Stock out costs are a problem. So the bottom line is that we need to balance these inventory costs out. We need to hold the right amount of inventory. Um, we need to value inventory issued uh, and remaining accurately. Um, we need to be ordering from the right people in the right way. And we need to have facilities and procedures for receiving in our inventory, storing it correctly, ready for use. Again, this sounds like a big, big headache, but maybe there's a solution coming up. Let's move on from there. Um, when we think about this first uh, area of um, formulae, let's talk about the reorder level. Now, this is important for us because the examiner is going to push questions in using formulas, and this will be one that he would choose. Okay, So, um, you know, organizations must pick um, the optimum amount of inventory, and they must minimize overall cost. Um, so, what sort of things do they consider? Well, clearly, they're going to consider when to order. Okay, Now, this is important, and, and this phrase, lead time, is important. Now, suppliers will be different. Um, we need to know the waiting time between placing an order and it actually receiving the goods. Okay, That's going to tell us, obviously, when to order. Outside of the timing or when, clearly, the next question is how much. How much do we order? We must avoid, given the points that we've made up top, holding too much. It's going to cost us too much. But we must also avoid holding too little. Remember, stock outs, reputation, etc. If we can't meet demand, this is a no-no for any business. Moving on from there, this formula. Now again, watch for this because this formula, as you'll see, just bottom part of the branch there, is not in the tables. Okay, uh, What is it? Well, it's a reorder level. What do we mean by that? Well, 
the inventory level held at which the company should place an order to minimize inventory holding costs and stock out risk. So you'll see the formula here. And again, as I've said elsewhere, where we see formulas, whether or not they're in the tables or not in the tables, the way to learn them for me is not to memorize them necessarily, um, but to use them. So the reorder level is basically the maximum usage times the maximum lead time. That's the reorder level. When we get to that level, we need to reorder. Let's put these formulas into practice, please. That's the way to get them down.